Hey, what's up everybody? So if you've watched my last What's In My Wallet video, then you know that I've been gone for about two months now traveling throughout Africa. But I'm back now and I have some interesting credit card news for you regarding my somewhat all over the place credit card strategy. To give you guys some background on what I'm talking about, less than a year ago, I retired from the US Air Force after 20 years. Well, if you didn't know, active duty military personnel don't have to pay annual fees on most credit cards. Well, now that I've retired, I've been getting letters left and right about how I have to start paying annual fees again. So it's time to start canceling or downgrading some of these cards and come up with an actual credit card strategy. So can you help me out? As far as premium credit cards that I have with high annual fees, currently I have the Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant, the Hilton Aspire, Chase Sapphire Reserve, City Prestige, US Bank Altitude Reserve, and the American Airlines Executive Card. Not to mention a gang of other mid-tier credit cards. So yeah, some of these are going to have to go. I've already canceled my Platinum card by American Express. And up next on the chopping block is my Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant, which has an annual fee of $650. Or my Hilton Aspire card, which has an annual fee of $550. Now I travel a lot, over 10 countries in the past 6 months to be exact. And I have been getting great value from these cards but I've just been spending too much money on hotel stays. And moving forward, I'm primarily gonna be staying in much more affordable Airbnbs. By the way, if you wanna check out some of my travel experiences, I'll link my Instagram and YouTube travel channel down in the description box. But anyway, with all that said, let's take a look at some of the major benefits of each card, and more importantly, at my personal situation. So hopefully you can help me decide on which one of these two cards I should cancel. If this kind of content interests you, consider subscribing. But let's go ahead and get started. Now my overall goal is lowering the amount of annual fees I'm paying across the board. So that massive $650 annual fee on the Bonvoy Brilliant already has me leaning towards canceling that one. But first, let's take a look at some of the big benefits each card is packing. Because how much value I can get from each card is critical. So first, with the Bonvoy Brilliant, I get Platinum Elite status which is Marriott's third highest elite status, just behind titanium and ambassador status. Now, although Platinum Elite isn't Marriott's top status, you still get things like free room upgrades when available, late checkouts, free breakfast, lounge access, and a bunch of other stuff. Just last month while in Durban, South Africa, I got upgraded to basically a two-story apartment for having Platinum Elite status. It might've been one of the best upgrades I've gotten through Marriott. Now moving over to the Hilton Aspire card, with this one, you get their top tier elite status, which is diamond status. To be honest, you're basically getting the same perks as Marriott Platinum Elite members are getting. Yes, there are a few differences, but the differences are pretty small in my opinion. Here's a sweet upgrade I got in Johannesburg, South Africa back in January at their Hilton Santon property. For me, both elite statuses have been great. So the status that you get from these cards really doesn't move the needle in either direction for me. So let's take a look at the point earning categories to see if there's a big difference in that area. First, with the Bonvoy Brilliant, you earn 6x on Marriott purchases, including hotel stays. 3x at restaurants worldwide, which is important because I'm traveling internationally about 6 months out of the year. You earn 3x on flights booked directly with the airlines. And lastly, you earn 2x on all other purchases. Now based on my past days over the last few years, I value Marriott points at around 0.8 cents per point. Obviously you can get more or less value out of your points, but 0.8 cents per point is where I usually land. That comes out to a return on spend of 4.8% back on Marriott purchases, 2.4% back at restaurants worldwide and also on flights booked directly with the airlines, and 1.6% back on everything else. That's pretty decent, but let's compare it to the Hilton Aspire. With this one, you're gonna earn 14X on Hilton purchases, including stays, 7X at US restaurants, which is much different than the Bonvoy Brilliant, because with that card, you're getting an elevated earning rate on restaurants worldwide, not just in the US. Moving on, you also earn 7X on select travel, which includes flights booked directly with the airline or on the MX travel portal, and also on car rentals booked directly from select rental car companies. Lastly, you'll earn 3X on everything else. 
Based on past days, I value Hilton points at about 0.6 cents per point. So that breaks down to 8.4% back on Hilton purchases, 4.2% back at US restaurants, as well as on flights and car rentals, and 1.8% back on all other purchases. So overall, I'll be earning more with the Hilton Aspire, except for dining when I'm out of the country. But to be honest, that really isn't a factor for me. Because many of the cities I visit throughout Africa don't really accept American Express anyways. And even if they did, I'd much rather use my Chase Sapphire Reserve for dining purchases. Which by the way, is on the chopping block as well. But we'll save that for another video. So the Hilton Aspire has the edge when it comes to point earning categories. Some other big perks that may move the needle are free nights and statement credits. With the Bonvoy Brilliant, you get a free annual night on your one year anniversary and every card member anniversary after that. You also get a $300 annual dining credit at restaurants worldwide. However, this is broken up into $25 per month, so you can't use the full $300 in one month. Lastly, you're going to get a $100 Marriott on property credit that can be used towards incidentals at Ritz-Carlton and St. Regis properties if you stay two nights or more. Now moving over to the Hilton Aspire, just like the Bonvoy Brilliant, you get a free annual night every card member anniversary. But with this card, you also get one when you open your account. I've had my card for a while now, so that extra free night doesn't play a role in my decision. Next, you get an annual $400 Hilton Resort credit that can be used towards room rates, room service, spa services, and things of that nature. But again, this credit is only going to be applied at Hilton Resort properties, not all properties. And it's semi-annual, so $200 the first six months of the year and $200 the second half of the year. You also get a $200 flight credit. This is broken up into $50 in statement credits each quarter. Lastly, you're going to get a $100 Hilton on property credit for incidentals at Waldorf Astoria and Conrad Hotels, if you stay two nights or more. Both these cards have other benefits, but these are the big ones that weigh the most for me. If you want to check out my full reviews of these cards, I'll leave my reviews down in the description box. But anyway, as you can see, the Hilton Aspire has more credits that personally I can easily use and benefit from. With the Hilton Aspire, I've already used $50 of the $200 annual flight credit, and next month I'll be using $200 of the $400 annual resort credit. So I've already clawed back most of the annual fee, and it's only March, and I still have my free night plus the remaining statement credits to use. Before I forget, if you're interested in either one of these cards and you want to support my channel, you can do so by applying using the links in the description box below. Now with the Bonvoy Brilliant, so far this year, I've used $75 of the $300 annual dining credit and I'll be using my free night later this year. So I'm a long way from clawing back that annual fee. But the good thing about the Bonvoy Brilliant is that I've stayed at Marriott Properties almost 20 nights this year already. So I've racked up quite a bit of points and have had some great experiences. With Hilton, I've only stayed 14 nights. So not as many nights as with Marriott, but I've still earned a nice amount of points. But that brings me to my issue moving forward, and this might be the determining factor. I just don't know. Well, Hilton is my favorite hotel chain and has one of the best top tier credit cards on the market in my opinion. However, most of my travel is throughout Africa, and Hilton only has 28 properties across the entire continent, spanning across only 8 countries. Meanwhile, Marriott has 129 properties on the continent, spanning across 20 countries. So yes, I'm shifting towards primarily using Airbnb, but I'm still going to be using hotels from time to time, and Marriott just has more. But I do love Hilton, so I'm torn. So guys, help me out. With all the details about my situation, should I keep the Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant or the Hilton Aspire? Or should I just suck it up and keep them both? Let me know what you think down in the comment section. And thanks again for helping me out with my decision. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.